We talk about a lot of fish here that have some great color. The fish we're going to be talking about in today's video is going to bring some precious metals into your fish tank. Do not underestimate the fish that give you the really awesome gold and silver colors because they can stand out from across the room. Many of you asked what this fish was when we did the Ember Tetra species profile. Today, we're going to be talking about the Gold Tetra. Thanks for being here. So this is a tank we highlighted in the past when we were talking about Ember Tetras. And a lot of you asked, what was the other fish in this tank? Well, it's the Gold Tetra. It is a fantastic fish. It stays small. So it's going to be around the size of a Neon Tetra or maybe a Cardinal Tetra. They come from South America. And the water there is typically on the softer side with a lower pH on more the acidic side. Now, again, their size right around an inch and a half, maybe two inches or so. Usually in a home aquarium, you're, you're looking at around an inch and a half. And as you can see, the colors are really, really cool and they really stand out. Now, a lot of times when you first see them at the pet store, they are going to be a lot more gold. And over time, they will turn more silver. One of the reasons for that color change is in nature, they actually produce a substance a secretion that protects them from protozoan and parasitic infections. This gonin is something that is going to protect them and it gives them that gold color where when you keep them in captivity and you keep them in an aquarium, sometimes they lose a little bit of that. However, they still look absolutely amazing. You're seeing this tank. This is one that Joanna Aquascaped in a few moments. I will show you another one that was at Aquashella that Melanie Holmes Aquascaped that's also really cool, a very different look. These are peaceful fish, and I think it's one of the things that attracts people to these smaller tetras is you can keep them in a community aquarium, and you don't need a really large aquarium to enjoy these fish. You can expect them to live somewhere around three to five years. If you are considering tank mates for your gold tetra, you do have a fair number of options because they are peaceful community fish. Keep them with fish that are like-minded. In this particular fish tank, we have some ember tetras. That was a really nice combination. There was also a clown pleco in here, bristlenose pleco as well. Other types of fish, quarry cats, pygmy quarries. You could do hatchet fish. If you're looking for a centerpiece fish, you've got some pretty cool options. Maybe honey grammy or dwarf grammy. You could do some smaller cichlids like your epistogramma, rams, crebenzis would be really cool. Certainly you've got your other types of tetras like your neons, black neon standards, greens. Uh, like I said, here we've got the ember tetras. Even the smaller rasboras might work out just fine like your chili, dwarf rasboras, brilliant green rasboras. By the way, we're going to have a ton of species profiles in the description below if you want more information on some potential tank mates for these fish. Now, in terms of water parameters, they're fairly easy to keep. Temperature is somewhere around 75 to 82. They should be fine. pH of around 6 to 8. We keep our fish at around a pH of 8 to 8.2. They've been thriving and living for years in this water. Water hardness, somewhere around 3 to 10 degrees. Now we are at 10 degrees on our GH and KH. You do want to make sure your water quality is good, so don't add these fish to an uncycled tank. You want to make sure that you have no ammonia and no nitrite, and your nitrates, generally speaking, should be kept around 20 parts per million or less. Now, the interesting thing about these fish, or one interesting thing about them, is they're pretty easy to feed. So we feed all of our fish North Fin foods. So you can use North Fin flakes, North Fin micro pellets, small pellets. The tank size is something you have to consider. Now this is a 15 gallon column tank. I would suggest that when you're keeping these fish, you'd want at least around 15 to 20 gallons. Longer would be better. The column tank that you're seeing here is probably not the most ideal setup. If I were going to keep these fish 
in the ideal situation, I would really want a 20 gallon, so something that's around two feet in length or so. And the only reason for that is it's not like this is a huge fish, it's not. However, you do want to keep them in groups, and so that's something you want to consider when you're thinking about tank mates. You know, maybe you want to keep them with a betta, which we have done. You just want to keep these tetras well fed uh, so that they don't fin nip your bettas. But if you're going to keep them, keep them in a group of at least six. But ideally, if you can get eight, 10, 12 of them, they're going to look really striking. And that generally requires a larger tank of around 20 gallons. Now, this is the other tank I was talking about here. This is a black water tank with a lot of botanicals in here. So when you're thinking about setting up your fish tank, there's a lot of options here. Definitely driftwood and rocks look really great. You can use live plants if you have to use the plastic plants because you're not used to doing live plants, that's fine. But you can see here in this particular setup where it really looks like a piece of nature, it, they really do stand out quite nicely. And so all the botanicals that you see in here, all the leaves and the cones, that adds a little bit of darkness to the water. And sometimes, and it's been the case with these fish, they actually show more color when the lights are a little bit more subdued. Substrate isn't going to matter, so if you want to do gravel or sand, either one is fine. They don't interact with the substrate, so when you're choosing a substrate, I would choose the substrate based on other fish. These neons won't care. They're mostly mid-water swimmers. Now, if you want to breed the gold tetra, this is going to be an egg scatterer like a lot of your small tetras. It's going to require you to have, of course, males and females. It's also going to require you to get a lot closer to the water parameters that they would find in nature. So the pH is going to be more on the acidic side, softer water. The females it will, it will, they're egg scatterers, so you're going to find eggs all over the place. The problem is these fish do eat the eggs. They will eat the fry. And so typically what people do is they will put a spawning mop in a tank. The eggs will adhere to the spawning mop. You remove the spawning mop, put that in another tank, of, let's say a 10 gallon with a fully cycled sponge filter, run some air, and then over the course of a day or so, the eggs will hatch. They're going to be really small fry. So you're going to have to feed them infusoria. And then after about a couple, maybe a month or two, you might be able to switch them to live baby brine. So it's not exactly the easiest fish in the world to breed. Breeding isn't so bad. It's, it's keeping the fry, uh, making sure that they're viable and feeding them. But this is a great fish. It's certainly something, if you see them, they're not as common as some of the other types of smaller tetras. But these fish can add a lot of interesting color to a fish tank, even though they're kind of gold and silver. The contrast between them and some of the other smaller fish is absolutely outstanding. So if you can see them, they're definitely worth giving a try. Again, if you want more information on some of the fish that can go with your gold tetras, check out the description below. Appreciate you being here, and we'll see you in the next one.